often you'll run into a problem where you have a image that either you need to stylize or need it as a vector object or just need to be able to expand it to fit a large area without filling um, without it going all pixely and nasty looking. So here's the scenario is somebody's asked for you to create a 11 by 17 poster that will be hung around campus to raise awareness for an event and they want it to be a picture of this bird and they want it to cover the whole background. Well when I open my picture and copy it and paste it into my new canvas, it's really small. It's just not going to do the job, but this is the one that they want to use. So even though this is a stock image and our person has permission to use it, it just doesn't live up to the, what we need it to do. What I do in this situation is take this image into Adobe Illustrator and vectorize it because sometimes you can come up with really cool results that way. Now you can open the image right into Illustrator if you'd like. I'm going to just copy my layer, Command C, and open Illustrator and paste it in. In Illustrator, create a new file by going to File and New, and then just click OK. Paste, Command V. Most of the controls that you've learned in Photoshop also work in Illustrator. They're very, very similar. So things like spacebar to pan around or Z to zoom will work more or less the way that you're used to them working. This picture must be selected. So if it doesn't have the little squares on each of the corners, grab your move tool and click on it once. Now there are lots of fun options for image tracing and I am not familiar enough with them to feel confident teaching it yet. So I have actually provided some links on the website to very different um, types and techniques of tracing. So this tutorial is just going to show you the very, very basic one. If you look up in the control bar, there's a button called image trace. If you click it, your computer will think a moment and then you should get something that looks like this. It has created a purely black and white image and has really stylized the detail on this bird. So it has its own unique look now which is kind of cool. However this isn't quite yet the vector object we need it to be. So after clicking trace then click the expand button that is now in the control bar it has expanded those shapes so now that they are surrounded by paths and it's not just the black it's also the white what we really want to be left with though is just the bird so we need to get rid of the white the way you can get rid of the color that you don't want from your newly expanded object is to grab the magic wand tool and click on the white in this area and then hit delete you should be left with just the black of the bird. The object that we're looking at isn't actually all connected together yet. So I grab my direct selection tool just to show you that these are just pieces that are existing together on the board but aren't actually connected. We need to change that. So grab your white selection tool which is the top right one in the toolbar and then click outside of the bird and drag to make a selection around the entire area of the bird and then go to object menu and then down to compound path and choose make. So now if I click on one of these the whole thing should move and it is all together one object. When making vector objects it's sometimes nice to just save the illustrator file. If you keep a kind of an image morgue or a reference that you go back to multiple times these are nice things to keep. They're not huge files and you can use them a lot. But that's not what we're here to do. We're going to take this back into Photoshop. So click on it to make it active, copy command C and then go back to Photoshop and paste command V. You will get this paste as window. You have quite a few different options. What we're going to paste for this one is just a shape layer because that's what we've been working with for the lesson. So choose shape layer and click OK. 
and it will create a shape layer in your layers panel. I'm going to deselect and transform command T make this birdie big and with it now being a vector object I can make it as big as I want to go I can also grab my shape tool and change the fill to a different color if I'd like uh, and also the um, the outline, the stroke, you can do that as well with your object. You'll notice, however, that the areas that were white inside of it are simply transparent, and that's just a result of the way I selected my white and got rid of it. This is how I work. I realize that a lot of other people probably have different techniques, and I have linked to several other examples of people doing tracing in Illustrator to bring into their picture. All right, let's pop back to Illustrator for just a second, and I'm going to show you one more. Oh, I deleted my, I thought I had a spare copy. All right, I'm going to come back to Photoshop and click on my picture layer, copy it again, and come back to Illustrator and paste. The other image tracing options are accessible underneath this little arrow next to the image trace and you can do multiple things so that was the most basic one you can also do um, multiple colors you can do almost a photographic rendering but it might take a while the more complex of a render that it does the more your computer has to think so if you have a slow computer beware before you click on high fidelity photo <laughs> I'm just telling you from from experience but let me just click on 16 colors so you can see what this looks like it'll probably take a little bit longer to figure it out than that last one did because I believe what that last one defaulted to a silhouette and it does pretty simple stuff alright you might not have seen that shift so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so this looks pretty cool. It's got the basic shape of the bird and the basic colors of the bird, but they've been simplified just a little. And unfortunately, it looks like he got his eye poked out, but that's one of those things you look at and go, oh, I could fix that in Photoshop. But right now, again, this is not yet the path line, so we need to click Expand so that they become paths that we can affect. Now you can see that there are lots of paths here and the background has them as well so I'm going to grab my move tool and just click off of it so that's not overwhelming and then my magic wand tool and select first the blue and delete it and it looks like that actually got all of the blue which is great that means I picked the right one to do again this is not all one um, one bit if I click here and move it I've got a pixel but however this one we don't want to make into a compound path what a compound path does is makes it literally one shape so that it can all be affected at once what we want to do with this one is make it so that all of these unique individual little shapes move together so when you grab your black move tool and click and drag to get everything it will all highlight up like this and then go up to object and choose group command G now I can click on this bird and move him around. I'm just going to warn you when you start getting into images that have this many trace lines on them it makes it a lot more difficult for your computer to handle so if you end up with lots and lots of layers like this then it would be a file that just gets slower and slower. So if I wanted to use this guy on my poster I would need to select him and copy and go back to Photoshop. Alright, so that last one, we pasted them in as a shape layer. I'm going to tell you right now, if you do anything that's not just a basic silhouette, you don't want to paste it in as a shape layer because your Photoshop will just bug out. So when you hit Command V, I would recommend pasting images like this as a smart object, which will keep them vector and you can still go into it and edit it in Illustrator, but it won't make your Photoshop freak out. because it's vector I can make it as big as I need to make it. Okay well I hope that's clear as mud and uh, you can do some really cool things with this. Same principles for copyright still do apply if it's 
images that can be recognizable and the example I'm going to give you is the Barack Obama hope poster. In fact, let me just do a quick Google search so you know what I'm talking about. This one. So you probably remember seeing this at some point. This was created by an artist using a process that was similar to what we just did. And it stylized the image and previously this was sort of the like acceptable use of an image that would make it into the artist's own. However, this garnered enough attention and f mostly for the money that it was making for the artist, I would believe, that the company that owned this photo took a lawsuit against the artist and it was a two year long very expensive lawsuit where they were claiming copyright infringement. However, the case was settled out of court so it was never a finite, it was never specifically defined that copyright had been broken in this case. What I'm trying to tell you is be careful in the images that you choose to do this technique with. Now something like a bird in flight is going to be a very hard photograph for somebody to look at and say that was specifically so-and-so's photograph and the more specific a photograph is of say an actor the more likely it is that you'll get flagged for copyright infringement but if it's a set of headphones for example lying on a table that could be anybody's set of headphones. So I know it's kind of a gray ambiguous area but I just wanted to give you kind of a heads up before you go crazy doing image tracing and claiming images as your own. But anyway, this is a fun thing to do. I hope you take a look at some of the other tutorials and learn lots of other cool tricks to use Illustrator for.